Welcome to part two. I'm Greg with RVH Lifestyles and I'm joined by the one of the owners of this amazing 48 and a half foot bumper pull travel trailer made by Spacecraft. Steve is going to give us a private tour of some of the amazing systems in this coach. So we're going to uh, take our time, we're going to be going around, Steve will share with us some of the specs on the electrical systems, the axles, but some of the amazing battery power systems and inverters and air conditioning systems. Here we go. Well Steve, uh, tell us a little bit about the specs of the trailer. What kind of weight is it dry and what are you set up for weight now? The empty weight is uh, 26,500. As it sits right now, it's at 29,200 and with a max gross of 30,300. What kind of weight do you have on the uh, pin or the pintle I should say? The Hitch weight is uh, just shy of 7,000 pounds right now. Um, the rest of that being on the axles, obviously. Now, Steve, so. you uh, you wanted to be able to jackknife this trailer into severe backing conditions. Can you show us what you designed to yeah. handle that? Yeah, people ask me all the time, you know, about the fifth wheel, and they say, well, you can't jackknife a travel trailer. Well, I can pull a couple of pins out, um, one there, one here. I can then extend my hitch out, I could drop the pins back in, do all the tight maneuvering, I can do a 90 degree jackknife, um, then when I'm done tight maneuvering on those rare occasions that you need to, push it in, drop the pins back in, and we're back to normal operations. So one goes in the front? Two pins, one, one in the front, mm. one in the back. Now we can see at this point you've got leveling legs. Tell me about your leveling system, Steve. It's the Bigfoot leveling system. Um, you know, capable of lifting the entire trailer off the ground. I got six slides, th uh, two opposing in all three of the major rooms, two in the kitchen, two in the living room, two in the bedroom. Okay. Well, can we get a tour of the systems and kind of right. maybe let's go around and we'll show come us around what this you've got way, the, um, Yeah, just regular basement storage here, access to the Bigfoot controls here, along with an air compressor for if the event comes that somebody has to tow this that does not have air systems, I do have a compressor for the air brakes. So this system is what's called a blue dot, blue dot. braking system. We can see the brake chamber there. And this is a, a Via Air air compressor. Um, does up to what, 150 PSI? Great. So you got pass-through storage. And that goes underneath. all the way through. That is full so pass-through. We're, we're underneath the kitchen right now. Oh, okay, we're gonna take a big breath and show us, explain to us what you got in this pull-out drawer. All right, the electrical system here is a little on the unique side. It, um, it's a 48 volt system. I took a battery pack out of a Chevy Volt rewired it into a parallel configuration where I have essentially eight 48 volt lithium batteries. They're in this box. Mm -hmm. They run parallel into 2000 amp buses, which run through 400 amp fuse to a cutoff switch and into the uh, circuit breaker box. And in this box are the breakers for the inverters and the shore power. Um, and plus all the wiring for all the monitors and controls that have not been installed yet. You're going to be putting uh, this into that's, inside the That's coach. all going to, yeah, yeah, this is still a work in progress. The monitors and controls and what you see in here um, that control the inverters will all be mounted on the inside. Steve, um, tell us about these inverters now. The inverters, 48 volt inverter chargers, um, they run in parallel under normal operating conditions. It's a 4,400 watt inverter that just this one runs. That's the master. When the master reaches 60% of its capacity, the second, second one kicks in or the first slave kicks in and they share the load in parallel. And when they reach 60% of their capacity, the third one picks up the remainder of it in parallel with the others. And the actual total available output of these three inverters running in parallel is actually as much as not slightly more than what you would have off a 50 amp RV service. So Steve, you're not running this coach off of shore power. No, shore at power. At any point in time, unless you want to. I can run off shore power, but in order to have clean power throughout the unit at all times, 
a run through the inverters and shore power's sole purpose in life is to charge batteries. So the shore power keeps the batteries topped off all the time. A built-in circuitry into it, once again it's still a work in progress, but circuitry has been built into here. So if I'm somewhere, because these do require 220 input for the chargers. And, um, and they do put out 220 as well, which is required for the air conditioning system, which we'll see in a little while. In here, it senses if I have a 220 input or not. If I'm in a 30 amp service, obviously I'm not gonna have the 220 input. So this senses that, oh, you've only got a 110 service. Well, in that case, I'm gonna route power to a separate charger yet to be installed. Um, and uh, so it'll run power to a separate charger because these chargers do require the 220 input. Wow. So, and that was circuitry design, once again, specifically for that purpose for battery charging. Okay. And this is on a big drawer. It's on a big slide out drawer and slides very easily. It'll slide out the other side if I need to access the other half of the um, system. Okay. Show us what else we got next. Um, pass through storage underneath um, all the way throughout. They got lots of access. Uh, um, the shore power cord is on an electric reel as, long, as well as the, um, the hose um, for the water connection. Um, the kitchen has its own gray tank, and so that connects into the main sewer lines back here just through an ordinary garden hose. What do we have for axles and brakes? Axles, three 8,000 pound axles uh, running disc brakes with the blue dot system. Um, the suspension is an air, air suspension, um, and I don't know what else to tell you about it. Okay. Um, what do you have for fresh water, various gray water tanks and um, black water? I don't recall the size of the gray and black tanks. They are big. I haven't filled them up yet. So okay. um, I do have an 80 gallon freshwater tank. I believe just visually, as I recall, as they were installing them, they look like they're just as big. So yeah. I think I've, I've got about 80 gallons on everything. Um, back here, let's see if we got. Okay, in here, more basement storage. Um, on the left, or forward is a Onan 12,500 watt generator diesel, 28 gallon diesel tank. And then off to the right are my two outdoor units for the mini split air conditioning system. Um, you can hear one of them in there. If you stick your head in, you can actually hear one of them running. That's amazing. Uh, they you can just, hardly hear it you know, at all. You can't hear it unless you stick your head in the basement, essentially. Wow. Um, all these wires here that's the satellite tv system i've got mm -hmm. it wired up with a dish on the roof and um, push a button and i can have a remote dish away from the camper if i'm parked under trees or something uh, the the quiet air conditioning is amazing it we is heard, we heard that inside in part one if you haven't watched part one we'll create a link at the end of this video but i think that really change it's a game changer steve for this rv world to have the quiet air conditioning and the efficiency of those systems as well. It is. Um, they're very quiet. They're very efficient. Um, and, you know, I say the one disadvantage is they do take up basement space. Yeah. But Well, let's continue our tour around the back. Um, got most everything that protrudes through the roof is through the back. I wanted to leave the front half clean for an eventual solar panel install. Um, that's, once again, the whole thing is still a work in progress. So I'll have a clean roof all the way to the front for solar panels, more basements. This is the other side of the basement storage on this side. Other half of the mini splits and a spare satellite dish. Well, you need a spare satellite dish, do you? If I'm parked <laughs> under trees. Ah, I, I can okay. Put, I can put a remote dish. Um, you know, 50 feet away, find a hole in the trees. Years uh, of planning has gone into this coach, so it's obvious. More storage. So the uh, dish that you have up there right now is a wine guard, I can see. It's the wine guard, and like I say, it's a clean roof, no protrusions forward of that point. Also incorporated into the roof, I'm a ham radio operator, so um, for my ham radio antennas, I've got an eight foot by eight foot sheet of aluminum built into the roof for a ground plane for antennas. You ham operators will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, 
put an outside antenna for my severe weather radio because they don't receive well inside so I put an external antenna up on the slide there. Mm -hmm. Well Steve, what was the reasoning behind getting a bumper pull rather than a more traditional fifth wheel? few reasons behind it. Um, one, my truck has never been set up to pull a fifth wheel. Um, to, to go through all the conversions of converting the truck over to be able to pull a fifth wheel and I thought about it, the cost involved, and I would have gained no advantage. Um, you know, I thought, well, why not go continue with the bumper pull platform and then I can take all that overhang that you would have on a traditional fifth wheel and make that into storage pull it with a panel hitch and you know and I've lost nothing actually I've gained well and behind us yeah. we've got your Volvo the Volvo and that's where the smart car goes right a garage for the smart mobile man cave when the smarts out of it all your tools my tools there. spare refrigerator extra storage um, and just a big box how do you like your Volvo love it had it for 11 years now um, it's also a work in progress. Well, we're always making improvements. There's yes. always things to improve on. Well, Steve, I sure appreciate you taking the time to give us a tour of your impressive rig and enjoy your full-timing RV travels. Drive well, thank safe. you, Greg. You know, we appreciate all you do. Thank you.